This top fuel dragster is owned by Dan Horan, national NDRA champion. Today, this car is a dinosaur of the 70s, the last of the great front engine breed. It's the type of car that would have been driven by the grandmaster of speed himself, Don the Snake Perdome. Today, the snake is still at it in a brand new state-of-the-art car. He's had to learn a few lessons, but today his bite is as feared as ever. For over three decades, he has cast a dominating shadow over the drag strips of America, winning more national championship titles than any other racer in his class. Renowned for his starting line cunning and razor sharp reflexes, disposing of contenders in a plume of smoke and a roar of horsepower. His swift, deadly dart earned him the nickname Snake, the respect of the racing community and the love of the fans. Don Perdome, the Snake. We built models <laughs> when I was kids. She was just, uh, Don Perdome, he's a legend. He is one of a kind person. He likes to be at the top and he is a winner. He has the legend of following, you know, he's a uh, you know, four-time world champion and for years he was unbeatable. The Snake began his rise to fame in the late 50s as a drag strip hotshot who tore up tracks across the country, culminating in 1962 with the formation of the preeminent drag racing combination of Greer, Black, and Prudhomme. This match of money, technical wizardry, and racing acumen was nearly unbeatable. At one point, winning 93% of the races, but like his namesake in nature, Snake finally met his match in the Mongoose, creating a rivalry that has crossed three decades. I'd say it's the biggest rivalry in the sport of drag racing. It always has been, probably always will be. And it's a very serious thing among Don and myself and the crews and everything. And when we race one another, which we do many times during the year, uh, nothing is spared or left out. Because usually if you beat him, you can win the race because he's tough. In Top Fuel Funny Cars, Prudhomme ran a series of top-notch cars in the 70s and 80s. As the technology developed, so did the competition, and the winning became harder. The snake had lost some of his bite. I would very much like to, uh, to win the championship again, and, uh, and I aggravate. I aggravate real bad when, uh, when I don't win. Uh, but aggravating about it and... Uh, uh, it takes too much time these days, you know. Uh, there's, there's, we spend more time working on the computers and things and flow benches and things inside the shop to try and win the championship and, and to get back on top again. Every little thing is special, everything. The front end stuff here, you know, it's all special. Titanium, you know, all the wiring running through here and the brake lines. This is all being closed and all the computers will lay inside the chassis here. On the walls of his shop is a reminder of what he has achieved, the benchmarks of his expectations for the upcoming season. When I step out of the car at Pomona, the winter at the World Finals, I should say the last run, whether you win, lose, or what, uh, I think about the new season. Uh, even when I'm on my va vacation, I'm thinking about, hey, how's this new car coming out? You know, what's happening? I can't wait for the next opportunity, the next chance I get to, to get out on the track and to, uh, to get after it again. The Scold car was the last in a line of funny cars that Prudhomme has raced. For in 1990, seeking to prove that he is the person to beat on the drag strip, he went back to top fuel drag racing. It was a struggle. It was a difficult uh, time because, uh, you know, we thought we knew what we were doing. That was the most disappointing thing is we didn't, you know. The, uh, the car just didn't perform. The setup of the car is a lot different. The weight distribution, uh, the wing settings on the car is important. The way you run the clutch is important. The uh, fuel systems are very important, and these are some of the things that we took for granted when we did it. So therefore, uh, it just really threw us off, and it's taken us about a year now to uh, really get caught up again. For someone so absorbed by racing, the difficulties of that first season were particularly painful. And as if to remind him of the older glory days, his old rival, the Mongoose, rejoined the top fuel ranks as well. His disappointment was cause for reflection on his future drag racing plans. I'm not scared of getting hurt, I, and I'm not tired of it, although I've been doing it for some 20 some odd years. Uh, I still really enjoy what I'm doing, uh, but I also realize that there's a time 
time's going to come where I'm going to want a, a driver in the car. Then I'll go to my sponsor and talk to him. But right now, I, I think I'm still pretty sharp at what I'm doing, so I'm going to stay in for a while behind the driver's seat anyhow. Some days, like at the Winter Nationals, the snake reminds the elite of top fuel why he's still a force to be reckoned with, trampling the likes of Coletta, LaHaye, or Mata, again setting record low ETs. And drag racing is really where uh, you, you can uh, show that, you know. It's uh, something that, uh, you know, I just have a love for the sport. Uh, I was here at this very track in 1962, still here again, and I'm back, and uh, I hope I can come back for quite a while. For a racer like Prudhomme, carrying the burden of a legendary legacy can weigh heavy. His life has been drag racing, and success is the key to continuing that life. Like show business, a racer is as good as his last showing. And for the snake, the final curtain has not fallen.